get wet. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Ephesians is one of the 13 books that uh, in the New Testament that were penned by the Apostle Paul under the new under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. The areas that we'll look at today in chapter 5 are uh, pretty much sums it up with walking in wisdom and in sobriety, living in the light, and being filled with God's spirit. And because it's you Sunday, I got to move faster, amen. Uh, because it's you Sunday, and we only have about 30 minutes or less to maintain both theirs and some of y'all's attention. <laughs> we got to jump right into this thing. Because today's world is influenced heavily by what we call modern culture. But we have to pause and ask ourselves, what exactly is culture? Well, to the adult, culture can be defined as the cumulative deposit of knowledge, experience, beliefs, values, attitudes, meanings, hierarchies, religions, Notations and notions of time, roles, spatial relations, concepts of the universe, and material objects and possessions acquired by a group of people in the course of generations through individual and group striving. That was a lot, wasn't it? Yes, sir. And because it's you, Sunday, I got to give you the simpler definition. Because culture can be defined as a way of life. And in this day and age, if we want to, to, to reconfigure it a little bit more, it's the way of life that groups of people lean towards. Meaning it's the way that they do things. Mm -hmm. What's accepted or even what's tolerated. In today's world, culture's influence is strong because we find ourselves leaning towards what is socially tolerated mm -hmm. Even if we know, even though we know that it could be spiritually wrong. I'm going to say that again. In today's world, culture's influence is so strong because we find ourselves literally leaning towards what is socially tolerated, even if we know that it's spiritually wrong. So today, St. Mary, I want to share quickly with you because, again, it's youth day and I don't have a whole lot of time. Uh, I want to share with you five applications mm -hmm. that we can use to avoid being consumed by culture. Five applications that we can use, that we can bank on, that we can depend on, that we can lean on, that we can count on, that we can use to avoid being consumed by culture. So, so outline number one, if you've truly accepted Christ as Lord and Savior, number one is walk in wisdom. Look at verse 15. Verse 15 gives us some, some, some deep instructions. He, he tells us, see then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. In other words, young people, young people, raise your hand. Y'all scattered all over the place now, y'all. Amen, amen. In other words, young people, you've got to look right, think right, be right. I see your hands, Mika. I see your hands. You in the in the group with the young people. I see you. I see it. It's good. It's good. The mind is a terrible thing to waste. So you thinking about it in the right way. Young people, you gotta look right, think right, and be right. Even when you see some of your friends, or maybe even some of us, not acting so right. You got to be in the right frame of mind. And Pastor John MacArthur writes this in the MacArthur Study Bible about verse 15. And it reads, and I quote, this term, circumspectly, means accurately or precisely with great care. To live morally is to live wisely, MacArthur says. Biblically, a fool is not so named because of intellectual limits, but because of his unbelief and the consequent abominable deeds. MacArthur goes on to say that he or she, the fool, lives apart from God and against God's law and can't comprehend the truth or his or her true condition of the state that they are in. Mm -hmm. And certainly, MacArthur says, believers are to avoid behaving like fools. Come on. Amen. Amen. That's a powerful word. I want you to look at somebody. I don't always do this, but I want you to look at somebody and say, my brother or my sister, don't be no fool. 
Look on the other side. Look on the other side. My brother or my sister. My brother or my sister. Don't be no fool. Don't be no fool. Listen, don't live life carelessly or recklessly, young people. Young people, don't live life carelessly or recklessly. The culture of today is one that doesn't care about spiritual risks. Everybody does it, so it must be okay. If it's sin, somehow in today's culture, we treat it as right. Grotesque and we treat it as not so bad. But walking in the wisdom of the Lord means that I refuse to settle to eat the moldy bread and drink the contaminated Kool-Aid that Satan has to offer me. That's right. I said I refuse mm -hmm. to eat the moldy bread and the contaminated Kool-Aid that Satan wants me to eat and to drink when it comes to living in today's culture. Mm -hmm. I refuse to do that. Yes. As a matter of fact, God has been so good to me, I don't desire to do that. That's right. Because I'm not willing to forsake God's greatness for man's what we think is his goodness. Jesus. Culture in this sense doesn't mean much to me, but Christianity does. Culture doesn't mean much to me, but Christianity does. And as Christian hip-hop artist Eshawn Burgundy says, you can't buy what everybody's selling. That's right. Oh man, thank Talk you so much, You got it. You can't buy what everybody else is trying That's to sell right. you. That's right. That's right. And, and, and not to fall for foolishness, you've got to get some godly wisdom <laughs> deep down on the inside of you, young people. Yes. If you're not going to fall for everything, you've got to have some God in you so that when you recognize some crazy stuff coming, you got to repel it to the enemy, and that's the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. Yes. I say my own amen, somebody. Amen. The next application is you got to maximize the moments that you have to live for Christ. Maximize the moments that you have to live for Christ. Our lives are only here but a season. Amen. Young people, your life, my life, Amen. our lives is just but a season. Amen. Verse 16 says we need to redeem the time yes. because the days are, are evil. evil. Y'all know what happened last Tuesday? Oh, Jesus. You know what happened last Tuesday? Some people yes. got up and they went to work at a bank. Amen. And they probably had made plans, Sister Thornton, for the, either the end of the week or getting off cooking dinner for their children or, or going to the grocery store or doing some things. But, but at a certain time on last Tuesday in Seabrink, Florida, five people didn't make it back. Jesus. Five people Lord. never made it back home. Five people made it to work. They fought the traffic to get to work, but five people never made it back home because their lives were taken from them. Young people, you've got to maximize the time that God has given you on this earth. Middle-aged people, you've got to maximize the time that God has given you on this earth. Older, more mature people, all of us, all y'all, we've got to maximize the time Amen. that God has given us on this earth. Yes. While it may seem like we will live long lives. We are actually on this earth for a very little while. Because once we are born into human existence, our clock is ticking. Our clock is ticking. The day that you come out of your mother's womb and you take that first breath, you were born to die. Amen. Y'all look so good this morning, this afternoon, but we're all going to die. Amen. Young people, you've got to maximize this time. Yes. So you've got to maximize every moment, not with fleshly living, but living a godly life. Amen. I know this, this, kind of, this kind of preaching, I, know, I already know it's not popular. I already know because the Lord had, had, had dropped it on my spirit. I already know that. But he didn't change his message. Amen. I already know he didn't change his message. Amen. Your worship, young people, must be purposeful. Say purposeful. Your worship must be purposeful. And your service to God should be that of reaching out to the world, not with fellowship with the world, and to be intertwined with worldly culture, 
but to introduce the world to our Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes. That's what we do when we become born again. Amen. That's our job when we become born again. Amen. Folks always ask me sometime about uh, my favorite job that I ever had. I say, well, my, my, I got the three best jobs in the whole wide world. Amen. I, I say I'm a born again believer of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm a husband to my beautiful wife, Cassandra. And I work for Publix. I always say it in those orders. <laughs> I always say it in those orders. I, I, I think it's gravy to me. But I, but I put the first thing, the main thing, as the main thing. Yes. Because I wouldn't have my wife, and I wouldn't have my job, and I wouldn't have anything had it not been for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, coming into my life. Yes. So I think about those things. And I think about our job. My job is, is certainly to introduce the world to Jesus Christ. Yes. Whether by voice or the life I live, yes. something on the inside yes. should be reflecting on the outside yes. that looks at that somebody can look at my life or your life and say there's something about that person, and that something is a capital S Jesus. Amen. Do those around you see Jesus in you? Or are you blending in with the rest of the world? Jesus. I remember Pastor Tim Ross uh, from, from the, a church out in Texas. He said it like this. If, if people were following you in their life, would they make it to see Jesus or would they get somewhere else? That's some powerful, thought-provoking word. When your attitude stinks, it's hard to draw people to Christ. Jesus. When you drink, smoke, and fight, and live obnoxiously, or sex it up as much as the whole world does, Come your on. purpose isn't being fulfilled. Your pleasure-pleasing spirit is. Jesus. We've got purpose, y'all. Yes. But you've got to know that you've got purpose. Yes. God put us here for a reason. Yes. If your lifestyle is such, that means God is not satisfied. And young people, your contribution to help grow the kingdom is not maximized. It's minimized. Jesus, help us, Lord. You're not about kingdom building. You will not maximize your efforts here on this earth. Yes. You minimize them. Teach us. You minimize them. Maximize the gifts, young people, and the talents that God has given you for his glory and not yours. Maximize the talents and the gifts that God has given you for his glory and not yours. And this just fell in my spirit because I hear Reverend Teagle say it often. When you take taking care of God's business, God is taking care of your business. That's why you don't have to worry about going out there chasing things. That's why I don't worry about going out there chasing dollars. If I live the right life, I believe the dollar's going to chase me. Yes. I don't have to worry about going out there chasing the stuff. If I live the right life, if God chooses to bless me, the stuff will chase me. And then I'll have the right mind to learn how to handle the stuff. Come on yes. now. Instead of the stuff learning how to handle me. Come on now. Amen. Teach. Evil is all around us. And the enemy wants to utterly destroy us. Yes. yes. It's all around us. Those five people last week at that bank, they thought they would make it back home. Yes. And sometimes I wonder, saints, if we're so engulfed in culture that the culture has consumed us, if we're just as vulnerable. Hmm. I wonder. Hmm. Live every moment, young people, as if it's your last. But remember this. You have to be the one to make a conscious decision to live your life for God and God alone. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't stop there. Mm -hmm. Because in this walk, we got to seek out the will of the Lord. Amen. When you seek to understand what the will of the Lord is, you have sought out and ultimately obtained his wisdom. Not your wisdom. Your wisdom will shake it. You All need right. godly wisdom. Verse 17 says, And be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Mm -hmm. The unwise person, my brothers and sisters, doesn't want to consult God about his will. 
The unwise person, my brothers and sisters, doesn't want to consult God about his will. That's it. Right. All right. And as, as he may be afraid that God's will right. means that he has to give up something or that something mostly means self-control. Self that person don't want to give up, uh, give up or yield to God's will because he's got to give up some or she's got to give up some. They they want to be in control. We by natural instinct want to be in control. We want to be in control. Y'all can say amen. Amen. You want to be in control because when Adam messed that thing up, the devil told Adam that you know you can you can uh, or Eve rather you can you can be like God. You know, you might as well just go ahead on it and be like God, Eve. I mean, what what could be better, Michael? I mean, just be like God. You will know everything that God knows. You will do all the stuff that God can do. You will, you can probably make some world on your own. Come on. And how far was that from the truth? It wasn't even close. That's right. It was a lie. That's right. Amen. It was a lie. Yes, and so we have to be ready, my brothers and sisters. We have to be ready because that unwise person doesn't want to consult God. But we must understand that God's will for our lives first starts with his desire for us to gain salvation. Amen. And that salvation is only through Jesus Christ. God's will for our lives is for us to gain our salvation. And that salvation is only through Jesus Christ. Amen. Then, after we gain our salvation, it's for us to be holy. Hallelujah. Then, it's for us to be servants. Yeah. Then, for us to be submissive. Ooh, y'all mighty quiet on that right there. <laughs> it's for us to get our salvation, for us to live holy, to be servants unto God, and be submissive to his will. Amen. Yes. Yes, yes, I know, I know, Lord, you already set me up. I know, you told me. He told me it wasn't going to be easy. I mentioned this at Bible study last uh, Wednesday night. Uh, I heard Pastor Q say up at the chapel church in Tarpon Springs. Uh, he preached this several years ago. He said that when, when your will lines up with God's will, you have unbeatable power. Amen. Amen. Ah, yeah. Amen. He says when your will lines up with God's will, we have unbeatable power. Um, but that's the key. His will for us is to be saved. Um, and, and, and so when our will lines up with God's will, that means we're doing things God's way. Yes. And, and the key is when he wants us to be saved, he also wants us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes. He wants us to be sanctified. He wants us to be submissive. Yes. He wants us to have a godly experience when it comes to suffering and to experience all of that. With a thankful heart. Yes. What you say? <laughs> huh? Did you throw in suffering after all that good stuff? You okay? I could deal with the holy. Yeah, I could. I could. I could deal with the saved part. Uh, I could probably get close enough to straight to deal with the submissive part. But now you telling me I got to go through it, go through suffering, and still have a thankful heart? Come on, Pastor. Come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. But that's what he's saying. <laughs> now that's God's will. That's God's will. And it may not always come to where we suffer all the time. But if it's God's will, and he has endured, endowed in us the power of his Holy Spirit, yeah. and it's going to help us still go out there and change the kingdom, let thy will be done. Yes. yes. Amen. 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 That's God's will for us. But ask yourself, ask yourself, does my will align to God's will? Glory. Hmm. Hmm. Am, I, am I in line with what God wants me to be? Who, who's our youngest person in here? Probably Lil' William. Lil' William, when he can start talking, make sure you ask him, is his will going to be lined up to God's will? Mika, ask me to not bless you. Bless you now. Talk to him now. Talk to him now. Because we want his will to be lined up with God's will. That's right. Because my will might be um, out of line with God. That's right. It's like a car. You ever driven a car since so it died that had an alignment? Cool. Yeah. That way. You, you don't realize it. But, but little by up. little, they can freeze out. It's not in my notes. But little by little, little by little, you'll see the, you'll see the wheel kind of get a little... 
the steering wheel. Yes. It'll be a little cockeyed. <laughs> and you'll and you you drive that car, Sister McClendon, for a long time, and, and you won't notice that everything is not at three and nine, but it might be at 10 and two, right? <laughs> and you're gonna keep on driving that thing until it, 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 it causes you to go to the shop. But then when they get ready, because this is how, how, how spiritual misalignment does, it's not just one thing that go wrong, it's two. You know where I'm going, don't you? I, you know where I'm going. Because, because when you got to pay for the alignment, you get the alignment all fixed up real, and guess what? Now you need some tires. <laughs> Because, because when you drove that car so long, the car is meant to drive here, right. not here. You've driven it so long that the tires don't go out on the inside. So now instead of that, that sister that, that alignment that could probably cost you twenty dollars, now you're paying four hundred twenty dollars because you done messed up the front tires. Amen. That's right. Spiritual. I got to hurry. That's right. <laughs> The fourth application is we gotta we gotta avoid overindulging of cultural comforts. We gotta avoid overindulging of cultural comforts. Um, <laughs> and do not be drunk with wine, but be filled with the spirits. I want you to understand this thing. I know what the scripture says. I want you to. We hope this is a teaching moment. And do not be drunk with wine, but be filled with the spirit. But I also want to uh, look at Romans twelve and two. It says, and do not be conformed to this world, yes. watch yes. this, but be ye Trans transformed by the renewing of your mind that you that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect, perfect will of God. Yes. There that thing is, that thing again. What thing, that will thing? Yep. That will thing that showed up again. Yep. The culture today has a shift where sexual deviance of all kinds exists, young people, and is embraced and is pursued even by some Christians. Jesus, yes. help yes, us, sir. Lord. Yes, Teach yes, us. I see more. I, ooh, man. I know. Mm. We walk through the mall sometimes. Yeah. We see more stuff. <laughs> I, I'm a, I'm a, we see more stuff in the mall when they, when they, stand up, stand up, sister, stand up, yeah. When they her age. Mm-hmm. When, when they Elijah aid, we see more stuff happening now, even just at a trip during the mall, where we know, thank you, you can, you can sit, thank you so much. When even at the mall, we see where sexual deviation, mm -hmm. and don't just get it all twisted by the man and the man and the woman and the woman. It's mm -hmm. If it ain't in the word, it's deviation. Yes. So, so we've seen this stuff, and it's embraced even by the church. Yes. Come and on. that deviation has That's become acceptable right in churches all across the world. Yes. So let me make it plain. If someone chooses to live a lifestyle that's not acceptable in this book, it isn't acceptable to God. That's Amen. right. And it shouldn't be acceptable, acceptable to, to us. us. Right. Amen. What I look like if y'all see me somewhere else without Sister Helm? Glory. You ain't looking right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> And knowing Sister Helm, I won't be able to see. No. She's going to swell up my eyes. Yes. And take them out. Yes. What I look like being in a place without, without Sister Helm. What I look like. And even when I have to be in a place, she already know. She know who I'm going to be with, where we going to be, where we going to eat lunch. And then I make that person, because I have to ride with folks all the time. I make that person call their significant other and tell them, look, you going to be, I'm going to be with this guy. He blah, 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 blah. We going to go to her, because that's what we have to do. Right. And I do that because it's the right thing to do. Yes. She know who I'm riding with, if it's male or female, and it's not Deacon Green that she asks or demands, it's because my role is to make sure that she knows that she can trust me when I go out. Yes. Because I want to walk circumspectly. Yes. Yes. Young people, you gotta learn how to walk this thing upright. That's right. That's where we as the church go wrong, because we massage our way through. Over and around things because we don't want to offend anybody. We massage our way through. We we oh, we so careful. But the flip side is, we have no problem at all offending God. Jesus, come on. 
Make it plain. How is that possible? How does that make sense? Because you're walking unwise. Yes. You're walking unwise. We okay when I, I don't want to offend these two guys because they might not talk to me. And here God is with you all the time. And he's holy, by the way. He is holy. Yes. But we make it so convenient to offend him and we don't even think about it, young people. How does that add up to some Christians to where it even makes remote sense? I don't know. But this word says that we are not to be, or that we are to be filled up to the top. We ought to be filled up to the top, overflowing to the brim with the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. Yes. Yeah. Not the mother spirits that we like to play around with. Today's church and in today's culture have found a way to collide with one another, and it's getting harder and harder to tell one from the other. And that's because we spend an incredible amount of time overindulging ourselves in the things that are so fleshly that we lose sight of the godly applications that we should be exemplifying in our lives. From uncaring attitude about God to unholy living arrangements to defiling our bodies with pleasure, seeking drugs or alcohol or horrific video games or music that we go out so crazy we purchase for our kids, to attending Halloween hard nights and hollow scream, to engagement in prostitution, to being a compulsive gambler, and the list goes on and on and on because somehow we've got spiritually comatose. Jesus. We've gotten good at turning our spirituality spirituality on when we want to seem godly and off when we're around others that say it's okay to be yourself. Just let it all hang out. Jesus. We've gotten good at that. Help us, Lord. Yeah, we get out. So we got good at that. Yeah. Call me boring. But I know that I know that I know that I was bought with a price. Amen. And I was bought with a price that was paid by blood. Amen. And I was bought with a price that was paid by blood, and that blood payment means something to Patrick Hill. Come yes. On. Right. Praise God. Call me boring. But I know that I know Amen. I was bought with a price. Come on. So culture has got to get behind me. So here we lead to our last application. We got to willingly give yourself and your heart to the Lord. Lord. Willingly, my brothers and sisters, give yourself and your heart to the Lord. Amen. Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns, spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Giving thanks always for all things to God, for the, the God, the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and submitting one to another in the fear of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, God wants our hearts. He wants our hearts. He, he, he also wants us to care for one another. Yes. He wants us to praise him as if our very lives were instruments playing music that was pleasing or is pleasing to his ears and gives him not part of the glory, but all of the glory. Yes. Romans 12 and 1 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy, acceptable, and pleasing unto God, which is, watch this, your reasonable service. We walk around dead, but living. We walk around dead to the old man, but living unto Christ, our new man. Yes. We walk around dead to those things that, that have once held us hostage. Because we are become cross-eyed. Y'all remember that a few Sundays ago? Yes. We've got now become cross-eyed and we're thinking about God. Yes. Our walk as Christians must be that of humility, of submission, a walk that the world sees and recognizes um, is on a solid foundation, and certainly one in a relationship that pleases God, not one that dishonors him. We are not superior to one another. No, 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 no. We are not superior to one another, but we stand equally in every way for what's right. We stand for what's sound, and we stand for what's pleasing into God's eyes. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen. All of us up here have different talents. Well, we all bring messages the same way, but all three of us up here should be standing shoulder to shoulder when it comes to rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. 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 All 
all three of us have different skill sets. Yes. But we thank the Lord for those skill sets because when Pastor Dyer takes his and apply it to mine, and then I take mine and Pastor Dyer and we apply it to Reverend Teagles, then oh my goodness, Jesus. don't we have unbeatable power? Yes. Because we have lined up with God's will and we are able to take one step closer, shoulder to shoulder, together rather than apart. Yes. Amen. You want to make an amen, I'm huh? shopping it out. Amen. amen. Yes. If you want to make a change, tell yourself no more spiritual manipulation from the enemy. Tell yourself no more spiritual manipulation from the enemy. No more spiritual manipulation from the enemy. Tell it like you mean it, y'all. No more spiritual manipulation from the enemy. Yes. If that's too much to say, just say, get thee behind me, Satan. <laughs> No more being fruitless. No more being fruitless. Because some people just <laughs> come on. Some people just perpetrate. Jesus. And they wax fruit. Ooh. Make it plain. <laughs> Who got that? Yes. Some of y'all sitting there like wax fruit. Right? Fake. If I take the apple and pull it off the tree and bite into it, I'm going to know it's an apple. But when I go to Ashley Furniture Store and I see that fruit sitting on that bowl, on that table, in that bowl, and it ain't changed no colors. It has no smell. It's just made of wax. I can't bite into that thing. It's nasty. So we got to be we got to be real with what we're doing and stop perpetrating that with fruit. And we got to be real fruit. Yes. Give ourselves totally and completely to the Lord. I'm coming down for a land. And Ebony, Ebony used to sing a song. I love, love it too, cuz. Um, I need more of you. I love, I love. That's what I, I Ebony used to sing that song. I was gonna do it. I can't hit it now, Ebony. My voice gone. But she used to hit it. I used to love hearing that song. But I look at that song from a different perspective. And that's why y'all was right in the ballpark with what y'all was singing today, because I was gonna flip that thing around. But I look at that song from a different perspective because the songwriter was expressing, and I looked it up, I did my research on it because it's from Shekinah Glory. The songwriter was expressing that they needed more of God. Right. Right. I like one of them Scooby-Doo things. They, <laughs> they needed more of God, but I look at it as God needing more of us. Yes. Because the, the scriptures, the scriptures keep saying, and be full with the Holy Spirit. Now, wait a minute. If it's telling me to be full, how am I going to need more of God? Because he's already full. We've already read Ephesians. We've already read the church vision. Right? And all the fullness of God. So how am I going to need something that's already full? He needs, he needs me. I need what God has. Ebony, I still love the song. I love the song. I just look at it different way. And I love when you, one day you're going to have to sing it again. But I just love the song. But the songwriter didn't write it that way. He didn't write it that way. He just didn't. See, if we're willing, if we're willing to give ourselves and our hearts to God, I'm coming to a close. We got to kill our old man daily. Yes. We got to lay aside the weight and the yes. sin. <laughs> Some of us just want to lose the weight. We want to keep the sin. But the, <laughs> but the scripture says, the scripture says we got to lay away the weight and the sin that so easily besets us. And I believe our desire to cling to the culture will become less and less important to us because we would have more of a heart and a spiritual will to please God. We learned in Bible study last week when Jesus uh, uh, was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he told the disciples, I'm, I'm going to go away, I'm going to pray, I want you to sit up, I want you to watch. <laughs> right? And what happened? He yeah, was knocked out. Three times he did that. And he said this to him, could you not stay at least for an hour and watch and pray? And then he said this, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So in order to avoid being consumed by culture, you must have a strong spiritual connection with Jesus. In order to avoid being consumed by culture, you've got to have a strong spiritual connection with Jesus. Saints, we got some work to do. And maybe you don't see it right now, but here's an exercise that I like to do before I take my seat. 
I want all our young people to stand up. Mika, you can't do it this time. <laughs> I want our young people to stand up. Now, I don't usually leave the pulpit, but I'm, I'm going to have to do this. Come up here. Real quick. We gotta come, 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 come. Real quick. Real quick. Real quick. I'm going to show you just how easy it is. And why this sermon was so, yes, just stand right there. Just face me in the sermon. Why this sermon was so important for today. And it's not because I'm doing it. But it's because of what God needs for you to know. Amen? Amen. When you graduate, I want you to think down the road. When you graduate, when you grow up, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? Real quick. Bet. Uh, uh, uh. Something. Something good. Doctor. Chef in the bakery. Chef in the bakery. Something good. Art. Rap. Ooh. Singing. Race car driver. Engineer. Judge. <laughs> right? So here's how simple it is. And I don't want you to think I'm picking on anybody. Did you notice that they didn't say they wanted to grow up and be a pastor? Yes. Did you notice that they didn't, they didn't say, I want to grow up and be an evangelist? Yes. Did you notice that? Yes. Now, I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with what they Sin. I'm not saying that, so don't misunderstand me. It's not that hard. I want you to I want you to know how easy it is for culture to influence kids. Hallelujah. Mm. So because it's so important to so because it's so uh, uh, detrimental to what these kids are are looking at, it is equally important. Let me go through this line right here. It's equally important for y'all. Come on. To pour into their lives. Amen. Come on. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It is equally important. For all of you to make sure that we are doing our job. Mm -hmm. To make sure that we are setting the right example. Amen. Amen. To make sure that we are teaching the right methods and Amen. living the right lives. Amen. Could it be that culture got y'all too? Mm. Could it be? Could it be that even though he wants to be a doctor or a lawyer or a rapper or whatever it is, that he could put God first and say whatever the will of the Lord is, but I would hope that he would lead me into being a doctor so that I could be a doctor that knows the Lord so that when my patients come in, we gonna have some prayer. Could it be? Amen. Come on, come on now. I feel that. Amen. Amen. I want you to think about that. That's how easy it is. That is exactly how easy it is. When I was growing up, I wanted to be a railroad Amen. engineer. I love trains. Most of y'all know that. I wanted to be a railroad engineer. But as I got older, the Lord put me in a different place. Amen. And I know that it's a place where he could use me. Yes. And people now, they, they talk about it. And I always say, I know my place. He's given me a different pulpit. He's given me a different platform. And he has told me vividly that I need to be right there to do his will. Yes. Now, after all I preach to you, what do I look like aligning myself out of God's will? Come on. Amen. I am to walk circumspectly. Mm -hmm. To avoid being consumed by culture. Walk in wisdom. Maximize the moments to live for Christ. Seek out the will of the Lord. Avoid overindulgence of cultural comforts. And willingly give yourself and your heart you, to the Lord. Yes. Young Thank people, you, I challenge you. Mm -hmm. Think about your future yes. spiritually. Yes. Think about it Amen. spiritually. Thank you, Jesus. And if you can see yourself wrapped up in culture at whatever age that you are, that goes for all of us. Amen. And I would advise that you apply these five principles to your life. Thanks. God bless you. Thank you.